going to a different economy, and we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go. But clearly, we're, we're, we're learning that things can be done uh, from remote, remote locations. We're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're going. We're recovering, but to a different economy, and it'll be one that is more leveraged to technology. And I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for for many workers. In Silicon Valley, and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers, we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign. This effort, and China has big plans for this. They intend to seed um, their digital yuan into the global environment by giving it away to visitors at next winter's Olympics. When they arrive at the airport, they're going to get di yuan digital wallets. They're going to receive digital yuan. They're going to use it uh, throughout their visits to Beijing, and then they're going to take it back to their own countries. They see this as a huge advantage. Why? Because who controls the underlying protocols, who un controls the underlying standards of the future of money will control the future of money. Would you like just to have a Bitcoin ETF or a crypto ETF? You're, you're, kind of a beaten, you're, you're kind of approaching it in a kind of a circular way. It, when, when is that going to happen? What, do, what are you doing well, here? How does this well, listen, So this Invesco partnership is really exciting, right? They're the one of the largest ETF players. They manage a trillion and a half dollars. They've got over a 1, thousand, 1,500 salesmen who are going out and going to tell this story. And Sato, uh, this new ETF, right, Satoshi, uh, is really a combination of some direct plays in crypto, so they can buy Canadian ETFs in this for Bitcoin, Ethereum, other plays, direct companies uh, that are in the crypto space, and then companies from the real, the, the old world that are doing a lot in crypto. Uh, you, you can guess who they are. And so it's really a way for retail investors to bet on the blockchain and the crypto ecosystem. Uh, I do think Gensler will finally get off the stick and we will have a, a domestic, a U.S. ETF in both Bitcoin and Ethereum. Um, I'm not exactly sure when. I wish I had the, the silver ball. But this is actually a broader play that allows you to play the whole ecosystem. Um, and so it's, it's kind of, quite frankly, similar to why we set up Galaxy. Right, giving someone a chance to play the whole ecosystem. What uh, it's it's always we say well, there's what we don't know and what we don't know we don't know. What what do you see in in the next uh, two, three, four months that we're not uh, we're not anticipating f f for crypto? I mean, it, it could be China, it could be more companies uh, adopting it, more fintech you know, moves. What what do you think's gonna gonna happen that that's gonna dictate? the movement, where do you think we'll be in three, six months? So I, it, not to sound like the, the ever bullish guy that I sometimes am accused of being, uh, but I literally see a scenario where we take out the highs in Bitcoin and we have one of these parabolic moves in all the crypto going into the fourth quarter. A little bit, it's like when you go to the Kentucky Derby, the horse that turns the corner at the end always runs the fastest. Uh, in investing, in hedge fund investing, and remember, you know, my 12 years of running the, the macro fund, uh, the assets that are ahead in the fourth quarter usually have great finishes because everyone piles on and pushes the valuations higher. And I see that happening right now. I see this confluence event where the surprise will be, oh my goodness, how do we get to 80,000? How do we get to 100,000? How do we get to you know, 5,000 in Ethereum? Um, that will be the surprise. We've pushed a lot to the downside. We've thrown China, we've thrown regulation. Uh, and the market continues to hold, and it's holding because just new money coming in. There was $17 billion of new venture capital that went in the first half of the year. Uh, it's just a tremendous inflow of both talent and money. We, you know, we have people wanting us to mention this coin, that coin, this asset, that asset. And it's hard to even keep track at this point, Mike. And what are we supposed to think about that? Th these aren't all bitcoins. Not all of them have the the future of Bitcoin. Is it is it the wild wild west? And does it remind you of Pets.com? I mean, are some of these things going to hurt people? I, and I I think you need to be pretty careful. The, the simplest way I break it up is Bitcoin as digital gold. I think it's won that lane. I think it will continue to be adopted, and it will take more and more of gold's market cap. Right now, it's about 12% of gold. I think it'll get to 100% over, over a few years. And so Bitcoin's got its own lane. Then 
kind of Ethereum, Solana, Luna, Cosmos, Algorand, all of those are vying to be uh, part of the technology play, the blockchain where things get processed, right? And so we call those level one solutions. Uh, those are really technology bets. And we we invest in them based on adoption. How many people are using them? How good is the product? How good is the community? And then the third bucket is stuff built on top. And so this has gone from being just a macro trade, right? Go long assets to kind of a long short equity trade as well. Pick the right protocols uh, and have a methodology on why you think some things are going to be better than others. And so it is, you know, uh, it, it's not for the faint of heart because there's a high volatility uh asset class because it's so new. But it's also, you know, my advice would be stay simple unless you've got a whole lot of time and expertise to understand the difference between one point and the next. Forgot about, and those who are new to the channel that have not checked out the video Digital Wallet, please go look at that. That is my must watch videos. I'm gonna re-put that in the description. But guys, we have a Banking for All Act. Remember that was introduced June 30th, 2020. Basically, goes over the digital wallets, the Federal Reserve, the banks have until January 2021 to give all residents uh, in the United States a digital wallet. Now, you say, okay, you know, we've been talking a lot about that. In the actual act, guys, it has the postal service having automated tellers to maintain, as far as the board of directors, for the actual postal service. So the postal service will handle these digital wallets for the Federal Reserve. Now we see what's going on with the postal service right now. That's all you've been hearing from Trump when he got into office that the postal service is losing money. The postal service is losing money. We know UPS, FedEx, their stocks are going up. We know Amazon is now delivering so we have all these companies delivering their own items or contracting out UPS and FedEx. We know USPS is losing money to the United States Postal Service. So think about it, guys. How about if the United States Postal Service becomes your digital banks? Think about it, guys. It's not going to be people in there. It's just going to be automatic tellers that are going to be in there. And everybody has access to a postal service. I'm just giving you something to think about, guys. And that's also Welcome to the Crypto Teacher. And guys, you know, I come back with that video just to make you think. And we had Mike Novogratz speak of Bitcoin and Bitcoin ETF. Now, we know the SEC approved an ETF that's attached to stocks that have exposure to Bitcoin. But that's not a Bitcoin ETF. We know they're going to kick this thing down the road until the digital yuan is activated. And of course, next year, guys, we have ISO. Now, we have Mike Novogratz saying Bitcoin is digital gold. We know Bitcoin and these cryptos are not for us. They're for the robots, the algorithms, the drones for the fourth industrial revolution. And remember, the crypto teacher told you. And then also, guys, we know that DeFi is the new banking. We know it's going to change everything that we do. Even real estate, like I stated time and time again, is going to be tokenized. And we know how big gamification is going to be for this virtual world that the masses are going to fall for. And lastly, guys, I'm going to leave you with a video, a very, very important video that I told you I did August 17th of 2020. The digital wallets that are connected to the Fed ran by the United States Postal Service, and that's the reason why it's so important for the actual IRS to have access to everything that you're doing. That's the reason why Janet Yellen is such a great chess piece. They are moving along this digital economy without the masses even knowing, because we know when it comes to the New World Order, it's all planned out. Y'all have a wonderful day. The most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. The storyteller sets the vision, values, and agenda of an entire generation to come. Steve Jobs. And guys, you know I truly believe in this. When you look at the New World Order, they're the storytellers. And that's the reason why I wrote my New World Order book. But guys, now it's time to change the current generation. And I wrote three kids' books. You know I love the Trinity because I understand the power that's in it. 
So I have three books. We have an opportunity to change the generation, to educate, not just me, but I want to show you that I take action on a daily basis. And I want you to take action on a daily basis, whether it's your job, whether it's in your community. We have an opportunity right now to educate the masses. I posted this on my Twitter account. Please share. But this is a short clip of the three books. There's going to be a clothing line and action figures. Please get these books for your kids, nephews, cousins, friends. So therefore, we can start the re-education now. Because as we see, the fourth industrial revolution foundation is definitely here. Robots, algorithms, drones, taking humanity out the picture. We have to re-educate. But let's get into the video. Part 1. King Yahshua and Grandma Tim. Save the village. Part 2. King Yahshua and Grandma Tim. Save New York. Long COVID-33. Part 3. King Yahshua and Grandma Tim. Goes to China. It's mandatory to get part 1, part 2, and part 3 of this series. It's time to re-educate Generation Z.